I kill every plant I touch. I have never been able to make a single plant grow, not even cactuses. But sometimes you feel like this is finally your chance for your plant to grow. Not only do you have the basics of soil and water, but you have all the extra special tools that will allow you to be the best possible cultivator you can be. You have the best fertilizer, the most precise tools to prune the unruly leaves, and an alarm clock that tells you when to water your plants. But having a black thumb, no matter how much you prepare, is sometimes what rejection feels like, and it can definitely feel helpless. But rejection isn't limited to us. Walt Disney was fired from the Kansas City Star newspaper because he was deemed not creative enough. Oprah Winfrey was fired from evening news reporting and being a part of a Baltimore TV station. The last time I faced one of my biggest rejections was getting rejected from iGEM. iGEM is a synthetic biology club at ASIJ that works on integrating computer science, biology, chemistry, and mathematical modeling to find solutions within synthetic biology and to compete in an annual competition. I was so excited with the prospect of being a member of this club. Not only did it encapsulate all of my interests, but it would allow me to work with like-minded peers. In the end, I was rejected, and this wasn't a rejection that made me particularly sad in the moment. It wasn't gut-wrenching or jaw-dropping. Rather, the feeling of rejection gradually accumulated. It began with talking to peers about their project, and it continued with doing homework the next room over while they were working on labs. But I felt that there was nothing I could do regarding my rejection. One Friday afternoon, I bumped to the faculty advisor of iGEM, and I took a risk. I never expected myself to ask, but I asked her why I got rejected from iGEM. And in the moment, I realized that the reason that I wanted to ask was because I wanted to know how to improve myself. I wanted to make sure when I was applying again next year, I would have the right characteristics and traits to be the most appropriate member for iGEM I could be. It was taking action when one doesn't necessarily agree with the decision and wants to understand why. Following this experience, I decided I wanted to treat other missed opportunities and rejections in my life with the same mindset that I dealt with iGEM. Many of us here are aware of the five stages of grief, more popularly known as the Kubler-Ross model. While I think that it's really interesting that they've been able to characterize the five stages of grief, it's, I think that there's too much of a focus on what occurs during the five stages of grief. And rather, we should focus on how we should grow and improve following grief or rejection. Thus, today, I'd like to talk about five stages of reflection following rejection. The first is realization. This is really similar to the acceptance stage of the Kubler-Ross model. This is fully acknowledging your rejection and the consequences of your rejection. This means the awkward times when you have to tell others that you've been rejected and also listening to other people get accepted. But it's really important to not let comparison consume you. Try and be happy for others, even if it's really difficult. Furthermore, you'll have to shift focus on yourself. The second stage of this process is definitely the stage I spend the longest time on, and it's crying. Often when we undertake these endeavors, we grow an emotional attachment to them, especially regarding hope. Thus, it's important to allow yourself the time to have the emotional release. For me, crying is crying and talking to my mom. But for others, it might be talking to your friends, it might be talking to family, or it might even might just be being by yourself. The third stage of this process is reflecting upon the position and deeply examining what they expected from characteristics. This is important because it, you need to have the personal self-reflection to develop your own opinion for why you got rejected. This isn't the time for other people's opinions. It's time for your own personal self-reflection. This further relates to the idea of having a growth mindset, a mindset that states skills and learning is flexible 
and one has the opportunity to continuously improve. The fourth stage of this process is definitely the most difficult, and sometimes it's impossible to complete. But if you have the opportunity, I highly urge you to try. It is going to the person or the group of people that rejected you and asking them why. And this is important because it gives you the direct perspective of the decider. Furthermore, this is definitely going to be the most nerve-wracking stage for most people, but it's important to remember the worst response you could get from reaching out is none at all. The fifth stage of this process is definitely the most important, and it's taking what you have developed from your own personal self-reflection and what you have learned from reaching out and talking to the decider and combining them to make a trajectory for how you should improve yourself. That whether it's taking an online course to expand your knowledge or practicing so you can become a more effective public speaker, it's putting in that long-term work for continuous improvement. Not understanding a decision is an unavoidable experience that everyone here will face. But what's important is to reflect and look back. What should I do to improve myself? Maybe you weren't using the right fertilizer for the genus of plants. Maybe you were watering the plants too regularly, or maybe you weren't supposed to be pruning the leaves. Rejection is a bump along the road that we will all inevitably face. But being able to appropriately face and deal with rejection is not only a sign of maturity, but will ultimately enable you to face less rejection. Thank you.